Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Thought that he should end up going. I think he's going to have a massive season at Kansas. Before we talk about the impact on that team, just kind of walk me here a little bit through like your your initial reactions to this commitment and kind of how Kansas we look at Kansas now moving forward. Yeah, I, I wasn't really surprised at all by the final result. You and I weren't because, uh, and I just talked to Hunter for a minute. It, it, he said it checked every box. It checked mm -hmm. every box for him. That's the one thing. And you and I looked at it, and we kind of said the same thing. Now, again, 17-year-old Hunter Dickinson may not have looked at it that way. But I think by him being in college for a while, he looked at it a little bit differently and, and not so much. And I don't know what the NIL was. I didn't ask him. I, I you know, I don't really care. Um, but I think he looked at it of where can I, number one, have the best chance of, of, of making the league, right? Where can I have the best chance of uh, playing with a great point guard? Where can I have the best chance of playing with a coach that utilizes his bigs. And to me and to him, it was fairly easy, although he said it wasn't. He said, like, this was really hard with all the schools because, again, you're talking about some big boys that are really good at this, right? Like, Ed Cooley had the hardest situation at Georgetown because they've stunk, but we we know how, how good of a recruiter Ed Cooley is. We know how likable Ed Cooley is. We also know how close Georgetown and Maryland are to home for Hunter Dickinson. And yeah, that, that, that's, that's what event. I was going to say. Think about the options that he had, right? Yes. He's a kid from the D.C. area. Uh, he could have gone to Maryland to play for a program that I think he has admitted he really wanted to recruit him coming out of the Matha. He could have gone to play for Georgetown, which is the uh, one of the biggest brands in the Big East and a program that is synonymous with Washington, D.C. basketball. He could have gone to play for Kentucky, a program that just had the national player of the year that played the five for John Calipari. And he could have gone to Villanova, a place where um, – They've won two national titles and been to three Final Fours in the last seven college basketball seasons. So it's not like he had bad options. He, th these are fantastic options. He's the best transfer we've ever seen, yeah. right? So th this is not an easy decision, but I do think that the – you're right. The one that checks all the boxes is Kansas. Yeah. No, it's – it's again, and like the biggest box I think was was him watching tape of, of Dewan Harris – and just saying, holy shit, like, this dude isn't just a good passer. He's mm -hmm. an elite passer. And he's all about team. You know, obviously, Bill Self has had to implore him to shoot more for the betterment of the team. And he did that last year. But now, they're going to have weapons. You know, that that's the big thing. They're going to have major weapons. K.J. Adams can play the four now, which is his natural position. Let's face it, Nick Timberlake. Gives them a shooter on the wing. Maybe not Grady Dick, but honestly, like percentage-wise, not that different, and he's old. You know, he's a fifth-year kid who I saw last. I've seen him play a couple times in person. And, and again, he's not going to have to do a ton. Honestly, sit there and make uncontested threes. Mm -hmm. Because really, like Arterio Morris, you're going to get every un uncontested three you want. Like nobody's going to guard you out there in the three-point line. Well, you're going to have again. You're going to have Hunter, who's going to be able to space the court because he he can jump out and he can pass it. Like you're getting a very well-rounded Hunter Dickinson now. That's the yeah. thing with Bill Self. You're getting not a freshman, not an unfinished product. You're getting a, a pretty finished product. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy. But by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. And man, that could not be more true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional bases for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. 
Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks. He's a college player. Yeah, the the thing that I think is um, the key for Kansas next year is going to be the perimeter shooting, right? The way that it kind of lines up, I think this is what their starting lineup will probably be. Then this is assuming that Kevin McCuller and Jalen Wilson stay in the NBA draft. Uh, Dewan Harris at the point, uh, Nicholas Timberlake and Arteria Morris on the wings. You got KJ Adams at the four and you got Hunter Dickinson at the five. Hunter is a really good shooter for a five, man, and it makes it a perfect combination with him and KJ Adams, right? Nicholas Timberlake is a really good shooter. The questions are going to be KJ Adams, non-shooter, Arteria Morris shot 33% last year, known more as a slasher and a scorer than a shooter, and Dewan Harris, a guy that uh, that you didn't necessarily have to guard on the perimeter last season. So it's going to be that shooting, and frankly, it's going to be the depth. They need more. They've, they've added two of the best perimeter transfers in the portal, and I think they probably still need some some help there. Now, they got some freshmen coming in. That are pretty good. The El Marco Jackson kid is uh he's good. He's yeah, elected. He's good. He's good. I think part of the reason you saw some of those uh point guards transfer out is because they knew what was kind of coming in the pipeline there. Um, uh, but they, they need they need to figure out some depth stuff, but you can figure all that shit I out, mean, right? You can you can figure out a piece. You need the star. I mean, how much depth star. do they need now? Like they what if they get a McKenzie and Baco? They're yeah. they're in there strong for him. Strong. Yeah. I I I would like to see. Let me put it like this. You need one of those. I don't think they need to add more. I think you need one of those freshman guards to like be able to give you 20 minutes a game. And I don't know. Like you, we'll, we'll probably find out more as the season goes well, along. Well, doesn't sure Arterio just need to give you 20? I mean, I, if, if you have. The, but that's just three guards. Like you're not going to. Are you going to play Mbako at the three? Uh, he wants to, but he's not a three. Yeah, he's he, not a three. He, so he that's, would like to, but again. Yeah. You know, so you have the I pieces just, there. You need one of those freshmen to step up and be ready to give you 20 minutes a game off the bench. I mean, they might get one more transfer, too. Yeah, they, they could. get one more. They could. There's pl- and, and here's the best part about it, Goodman, is right now what's left in the portal. We've talked about this a lot, right? What's left in the portal right now are going to be guys that are going to fill a role and do a job for you. You got yeah. your star, right? You got your stud point guard. You got your star. You got your wing score. You got your four man. You got your shooter, right? Now you just need guys that can come in and do a job. And it's easy in the portal to go out and find a guy you can bring off the bench and average 15 minutes, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, again, you build around him. And obviously the big question still becomes, in the NCAA tournament, do those bigs win, right? Can you win? You know Bill Self's going to win a million games in the regular season. And he's going to win the Big 12, probably regular season title next year. You know, get back to that and win it again. Um, the, The question is, can he build a team around Hunter Dickinson that is capable of winning six straight? Now, David McCormick, he did it with McCormick two years ago. So it's not like it can't be done. It's it just now you're building a team around a big who's mm-hmm. not a rim protector, who's not an athlete. Now, what Hunter is, is again, an improved floor spacer. He can step out. It's more in the defensive end that I worry about Hunter. To be I, I think he's I think he's better than he gets credit for defensively because yeah. he's sure. he's not going to be a guy that averages like nine blocks a game. He's not Walker Kessler. He's not Donovan Klingon. But he's gotten better when it comes to the uh, playing drop coverage. He he understands it. I mean, look, he's seven one and two hundred. Like he's an uh, enormous human being, yeah. and he's really good at being large and in the way. And that's kind of what you have to do as a five man. Now, um, is that going to is that going to guarantee you a national title? Like, I, I don't know. Probably not. But I think what we're seeing in college basketball right now is like a lot of these teams that are making deep runs have a five man that kind of play that role. David McCormick, Adama Sanogo, Donovan Klingon. Like there's there's big guys that are in. Norchad O'Meara was a big yeah. guy, yeah. right? So I don't think that it, it excludes them. And I think in modern college, everyone's got to You got to have a great five. Those are the best players in the sport right now. Yeah, I mean, again, the the, the biggest thing for me is just, do they have enough shooting around? And, and right now, still, you've got Timberlake, and that's kind of it right now. That That's my one worry. My one worry mm-hmm. is you need one more dude. To me, 
in the portal who's honestly a guy who can just stand there and drill threes. I don't need anything more than you get a guy from the SOCON, a high level guy from like the SOCON who can just stand there and make threes because whoever he is, it's going to be hard to guard him. Uh, and if they press up on a guy like that, it's just going to give more space for, but, but like Dewan Harris is going to have a field day working with Hunter, a field mm-hmm. day. And, and Hunter, the, the, the under, I guess underrated aspect of Hunter is how hard he fucking runs the court. Like that dude gets up and down the court. He plays hard as shit that, you know, again, is he physically limited in some areas? Sure. But like that dude, and for, since I first saw him, he plays hard as shit. I mean, I remember seeing him, I think it was against Wiseman. It might've been the first time I ever saw him in AU ball. And, uh, and he kicked his ass. I mean, he kicked his ass. Cause he just, he plays with that. And you said it, I think you tweeted it. He enjoys being the villain. Thank you for watching the field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends or check out the description for some other places that you can consume field 68 content.